dimensions are used to help fully define our sizing and our location of our sketching and designs. Constraints and dimensions are pretty much the two major building blocks of any good sketching and design process. So, starting off with this same sketch that we've created, we've thrown in a number of great constraints here, but we don't necessarily have any sizing or location information given yet. So to throw in dimensions, very nice and easy for us, I can just select whatever entity I'd like. So maybe I'll start with this line on the bottom, and I can see that dimension popping up. So right now it's 36. 469 centimeters. If I'd like to change that dimension, I can just tap on the dimension itself and change this value to whatever I'd like. Let's say 40 centimeters in this case. And then I'll just hit the green check to finish it off. Notice if you'd like, you can also tap and drag to move around the dimensions as you'd please, just to help clean up your sketch a little bit there. In a very similar way, you can dimension arcs, angles, and so on. So let's grab our circular arc here, and maybe I want to change that dimension to a radius value of 25. Notice here, I also have the lock command. That can be used to lock or unlock these values. Of course, if, I've, if I'd ever like to change a dimension, I can do that as well. So I can just tap back on my 40, and maybe I want to change this to 50 centimeters. To dimension an angle, I just select multiple lines. And now I can see the angle between those two lines coming in. And just the same, maybe I'd like to change this angle to 120 degrees. And finally, I also have the ability not only to dimension sketch entities, but also between points. So if I wanted to grab my end point here, and maybe the center point of my arc, notice that gives me the dimension between those two points. And I can tap to make my changes here. And what's also very useful here, I have three options for my dimension. So you can see by default it's coming in as just the total or absolute distance, but I could change that to a horizontal distance or a vertical distance. So maybe in this case I'd like the vertical distance of the bottom endpoint and my circular midpoint to be 60 centimeters. Now we can see that this sketch is fully defined. So I've thrown in a number of constraints and a number of dimensions, and now it's locked in to always be this exact shape. So if I were to try and move or drag anything around, it's currently fully constrained or locked in on this shape. Of course, if I want to change it after the fact, I can delete or change my constraints, or delete or change my dimensions as required. Now that we've learned the basics of constraints and dimensions, in the next few lessons, we're going to look at the ability to turn on auto constraints and snapping and see how that can help us in our design. And then we're going to take a look at creating an even more difficult sketch.